Now she's texting me. I haven't even opened the message. Only saw it on preview. She is trying to look friendly. Added smileys and stuff. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post, guys. I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. What? You guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, Reddit Relationship Advice. Cheating ex, 28-year-old female, texted me, 29-year-old 20, male, six months after breakup. What should I do? Last year, I discovered that my then girlfriend of one year was using Tinder and has cheated on me. We lived together at that time. Wow. Here's how the breakup happened. I confronted her in person. She kept lying to my face until I just threw apartment keys at her and walked away. She then texted me with angry messages, calling me names and denying it. Later, she acknowledged the cheating, but said that the guy meant nothing to her and I am the jerk for effing up the relationship. Later, she came up with a half apology for lying, said that she is in the wrong, but still tried to gaslight me that I overreacted and got the whole thing completely wrong. During these interactions, I tried to act cold. Tried not to show emotions, did not raise my voice, did not call her names, etc. But deep down I was exploding, and all this time I felt that all these words were left unsaid. She cheated on me and tried to guilt trip me in, in a very ugly fashion, and I really feel like I haven't stood up for myself. Now she's texting me, I haven't even opened the message, only saw it on preview. She is trying to look friendly, added smileys and stuff. I really want to curse her out. All that crap. It's been boiling inside of me all this time. I wrote it out in text file, and it is a bunch of spiteful sentences. It looks pathetic as I reread it, since someone would put so much energy into that text. I know it's coming from the bad place, but I feel like I was hurt really bad, and I bottled up my response. And now is my chance to lash it all out on her. If I won't do it, I feel like it'll keep boiling inside of me. Is it even worth it to be the bigger man in this case? I am very confused now. I'd love to hear some thoughts about what I should do. Wow, guys, and he has an update. Let's check out the update. Update. Wow, thanks for all the support and advice. I really needed someone with a, with a cold mind to give me an outside opinion. It means a lot to me, even though you are the strangers from the internet. I did not open the message from my ex, and an hour later, she texted me again. She tried to blame me again, guys. It goes something like this. I must have been too naive to think that we are not enemies and that you would respond. Don't bother blocking me here. I'll never text you again. Some context. I blocked her everywhere soon after breakup. She reached me via this older messenger, which older people use in my country. I use it only to stay in touch with parents and my landlord. I am not opening that message. And I really don't want to see her or talk to her. Your comments really helped me to look at it from a different angle. And I am happy that I did not reply to her and went to Reddit instead. Feels good now. Like I've had some kind of closure. Hope it will last. Anyway, I'll be fine. Wow, let me give my thoughts. Salute to this guy for not taking her back, not picking up that message, not working it out with her, and walking away. Salute to you, sir. You know, it's always sad when you hear, oh, I'll give her another chance because you know she's going to do it again. I can tell you this. 
that last message may sound like that's going to be the last time she reaches out, she'll reach out again. Happens every time. Stay tough. Do not answer that message. Phone call. She may try to call you from a different number. Don't do it. She might write you a letter. Don't. Don't respond. Don't. She's dead to you. Move on with your life and better your life. That is some of the best revenge you could ever do in these types of situations. I'm curious to see what's going on in the comments. Let's check out the comments. Someone said best thing to do is to ignore her and don't even give her that satisfaction that she can make you emotional. She is in your past. Let her stay there. He responded and said, thanks, friend. I've calmed down, read through the comments, and I am not texting her back. I honestly don't want to. Also, she texted me again, LOL. I assure you that she was trying to fish out a nice reply or reconcile from you to ease her guilt. Yep, you know it. You know it. Silence speaks volumes. The best move you have made. Absolutely. Take the high road, my man. You deserve peace. Yep. I'd recommend to even delete this so it doesn't go viral. And she has the satisfaction of reading and figuring it was you. Let that POS in the past. Wish you all the best on your future endeavors. Someone said block her. And here he is. Thank you. I really needed someone else's opinions. I am glad that I did not act on impulse and instead on lashing out on X, I just vented on Reddit. Yeah, salute to you, man. Salute to you. This is why forums like this are important, you know, or he could have gone to someone's channel and, you know, and heard someone talking about something that he relate he, he that he could relate to and he jump into the comments and other people are supportive. Like, hey, dude, you'll be all right. We got you. Welcome to the community, whatever it is. We need these types of spaces to vent and get it out, you know, because some people, a lot of you guys are listening and you'll say like, I just don't understand how he'll forgive her, how he'll stay with her. She did this. She did that. You know, a lot of people don't listen to these types of spaces where it's put in their head like, hey, wake up. Don't be stupid because uh, that, you know, love and being with just being with somebody for so long. You may feel a little guilty, even though they did you wrong, walking away. You know, and if you don't have people around you telling you like, no, trust me, I've done it before. It's not worth it. I know you're considering it. Don't consider it. You know, so it's good to have these types of forums. But uh, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. And I will catch you guys at the next one. So I played the long game, kept my mouth shut and went on working and making money while gathering evidence of what's going on. Two weeks later, we are in court. She was blindsided with the evidence. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story, guys. If you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a successful story, a story where you've gone through something and you made it out successfully, um, someone did you wrong and you got to see them experience karma, or you got the opportunity to get a bit of revenge. Send those stories in. But you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So, hey, True. Been listening to the stories and commenting here and there on what I've heard. I figured it was time to tell my story. I lived with my formerly wife two years before we got married. And that time we didn't have fights or arguments at all. I acquired a lake lot and moved a house on it before we got married. And we lived there for 13 years before our son was born. Shortly after that, she changed. Didn't want to have anything to do with me. Things got worse and I couldn't figure out what was going on. 
I did notice that an eye-looking thing was added to the home computer. I took a pic of it and went to a friend of mine and was asking what is this thing and he informed me it was a webcam. He had to explain to me what it was and how it worked. That got me to wondering about what was going on while I was working. This guy was a computer whiz kid and hooked me up with a thumb drive and a program. The program was a hidden file that would take a picture and save it on the thumb drive every 30 seconds the cam was on. I sneaked onto the computer while she was sleeping and installed the thumb drive and program and left it at that. Every week I changed out the thumb drive and took, and took the old one to my friend to see what was on them. Well, apparently she was doing sex shows online. I knew it was time to get out, but couldn't due to us living in a state that fathers had very little rights. So I played the long game, kept my mouth shut, and went on working and making money while gathering evidence of what's going on. In the meantime, I had a chuck of change in the bank and, and I couldn't afford to lose it all. So I started getting up early and taking my son with me to get a few things we needed for the house. And each time I pulled $300 out as cash using her debit card. We kept going like this till I had most of the money out of the bank and I kept enough in to pay the bills. This went on for months and in the meantime our son turned one. We had a party at her family's home and I played the part of the loving father while she was laughing and living it up with her family. A month later I had to go out of state for a week to work to make up money I spent on my son's party. I called her every day while I was out to check up on my son and made sure she was doing well. She was always short with her answers and got me off the phone quickly. I just let it go and went back to work. We were supposed to be out for a week, but finished up early and headed home. Got home early Friday morning and I walked into a shift storm. My wife was laying on the floor in the living room. My son was beside her eating crackers out off of the floor someone stepped on. I was livid and was about to go off, but I stopped. Got my head straight and I took pictures with my phone. I picked my son up and walked to the bathroom and cleaned up my son. I texted my brother-in-law to come back and pick me up. I got my son dressed and was about to leave and I remembered the thumb drive. I grabbed it, walked out of the house with my son and I got my brother in and I got my brother-in-law's truck. I told him what I walked in on and had him take me to the courthouse and talk to his secretary and showed her the picture I took with my phone. She sent me in to see the county judge and he looked and was asking if she was breathing. I said I didn't check and I don't really care. He made a call, filled out a form and sent the sheriff's office to pick my wife up for evaluation. I stopped back at my mom's house and informed her on what was going on. I contacted an attorney. Straight away with what I had and what was going on, went to my friend who knew about the computers and handed him seven thumb drives to check on while I was trying to calm down and make sense of what was going on. He called me over the computer and told me to, told me to stay calm. Tons of pictures on her cam doing her thing. Then on the last drive, the guy with her on cam in my house. They were smoking from a glass pipe and it went to them and it went to them having sex. And there was my son in the background, in the playpen. Oh man, that hurts. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, just like you said right after this, I would have I would have gone crazy too. I went nuts. He had to restrain me from getting stupid. I contacted my attorney and took him pictures of what was going on. He was asking me if she knew I had pictures and I told him there's no way she knows I have them. Saturday, I went back to my house and looked around. I found her diary and did a little reading and found a lot I didn't know about. All the parties she was having while I was out working. I turned in her diary to my, to my attorney and let him read through what was going on. He just smiled and said, well, that's interesting. I filed for divorce that day and she was served papers while she was in the mental ward. My phone started blowing up from her family and friends wanting to know what was going on. I told them to ask her. Two weeks later, we are in court. She was blindsided with the evidence. Her story was I had her committed to steal custody on her son. Shortly after seeing a few pics of her and the side guy sucking on a glass pipe, she went silent. I didn't know all the pics that I had. The few I put forward was enough. 
to get the wind out of her sails and silenced her attorney. I got full custody of my son, and she got supervised visitation. Well, it was great for six months. Then she started trying to throw her weight around and tried to pick fights with me, and I pulled a picture out of my wallet and handed it to her. Her lover boy doing the deed with my son in the playpen in the background. A week later, she vanished. I've been raising my son by myself now for the last 10 years. He's 12 now, and he's doing great. Just to let everyone know, sometimes you have to eat a lot of crow to make sure you have the upper hand. Wow, let me give my thoughts on this. Painful, 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 man. The fact that, you know, you'll get married to a woman, they, she basically lied. She hid this part about her that she had this secret urge to want to party and do drugs and all this stuff, man. And here you are, you bought her a home. You put her on a lake, a lake lot, you know, beautiful home, I'm sure. She stays at home. You work your tail off to help keep her happy, to help raise your son. And look how she repays you. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so glad you made it out victorious in this situation.